This is another Today's Economic Update from Richard Wolff and Democracy at Work. I want to speak to you briefly about the meaning, the causes of the defeat of the Labour Party in the recent UK elections. The story of that defeat begins, as all important stories these days really ought to, with the crash of British and world capitalism in 2008. The British have had a very hard time. They have gone, particularly over the last hundred years, from being an empire that imagined it ruled the world, 19th and 20th century, to a relatively minor offshore economic unit uh, alongside of a larger and much richer and more powerful Europe in competition with the United States, Japan, China, and so on, a competition in which the British continue to decline. But the crash of 2008 brought all of this to a head. The Tories, representing British capitalism, needed to deal with the fallout from the crash, particularly because, as in other countries, they bailed out the capitalists in England using the people's money. Having done that, then turned to the people and said, well, we've used the money to bail out the big corporations. We can't provide the kinds of services and the jobs that we used to so we're going to impose on you what at least we in Europe honestly call austerity. Uh, in the United States, that would be called fiscal responsibility. The austerity meant that over the last decade, for example, real wages in England were not stagnant the way they were in the United States, but they fell, and they fell quite significantly, putting the British working class in a terrible, economic situation. They suffered unemployment because of the crash. Many people lost their homes, their savings, interrupted their educations, and all the while wages kept going down and the inequality inside England kept going up. In that kind of a situation, when capitalism performs so badly for so many people, the system needs its political servants, and in this case, that's the Tory party, David Cameron, Theresa May, and now, most of all, Boris Johnson, literally Britain's Trump. And like Trump, he was charged with saving capitalism from the justifiable bitterness, anger, resentment, and hostility that the treatment of the working class through and since the crash of 2008 put on them. How do you do that? How do you save the system that's responsible for the suffering from getting the blame for the suffering? You've got to come up with an impressive, plausible, other explanation, or else you're going to go down with the anger of the mass of the British people, like you might here in the United States, and for the same reasons. But Mr. Trump and Boris Johnson came up with answers. And so these political outsiders, people with very little couth, as we used to say in the United States, little polish, aggressive, rich kids uh, with a long habit of being outside the acceptable, polite leadership circles of their country, even though they were wealthy and went to the right schools. These two mavericks came up with the same solution. Instead of blaming capitalism, they pointed the finger of blame at foreigners. That's a tried and true escape hatch for capitalism when it really messes up. Blame foreigners. In the United States, we blamed an invasion of poor Central Americans, far-fetched, you bet. Do something to those Central Americans, like put their kids in cages, will not solve America's economic problems, because those problems come from capitalism and not from poor immigrants. 
make a big to-do, as Mr. Trump likes to do, that we are going to not allow ourselves to be treated badly by our trading partners. Canadians, Mexicans, Europeans, Latin Americans, Indians, and above all, the People's Republic of China. No, no, we are going to demand new things and we're going to punish them with tariffs. You know the theater. In Boris Johnson's case, the theater was Europe. That's right. Britain being part of Europe, there lay the problem. That's why the British economy was in trouble. And defeating Europe and leaving Europe would be the solution. No one in their right mind would account for the difficulties neither of the American economy nor for the British economy in their relationships with the rest of the world. That's economic nonsense and politically the same. But it can work if the media line up behind it, if the theater of the politicians leading the charge is persuasive enough, enough and worthy of TV coverage, maybe it can work. It got Mr. Trump elected, and it got Mr. Johnson elected too. My last point. It could have been otherwise, but to do that, you would have had to have a political party, a movement, saying there is a different problem from foreigners that is a cheap shot, it's been overused, and it is baloney. Here is the problem, capitalism, and here is the solution, changing to a different economic system that doesn't work this way, that doesn't make a tiny percentage of the people grotesquely rich and everybody else in difficulty that isn't unstable enough to have these economic town downturns on average every four to seven years with enormously bad ones in the 30s and again in 2008. It would have taken a political movement and party committed to going beyond capitalism. That might have been the kind of alternative explanation for what was hurting people and the alternative project to get behind. So there would have been a good, clear reason to go in a different direction. The Democratic Party in the United States isn't up to the challenge. It is undermining the one candidate who might go in that direction, and I say might, Bernie Sanders. And in Britain, the same problem. Mr. Corbyn, whatever he might have done, held back by that political party of which he is a part, many of whom have no interest, desire to go in that direction. The Democrats and the Labor Party have been too accommodating to neoliberal capitalism for 30 or 40 years to be able to carve out the daring, necessary next step in their peculiar and sick way. Trump and Johnson understood that something extraordinary and dramatic, and yes, fake in their way, could excite people that maybe here was a solution. You can't defeat that kind of proposal, however far-fetched it is, with something that doesn't have a clear urgency, a clear analysis, and a clear alternative to offer. Or in the words of an old political kind of man who understood these things. You can't beat something, he told me, with nothing. The Labor Party is an impressive party. It's way better than the Tories, like the Democrats are better than the Republicans. But better isn't enough in a period of crisis of capitalism, and that's what the election in Great Britain teaches us.